Kubernetes space right now is kind of like taking a flashlight that's off, chucking it into a cave, and then attempting to find it in the dark. Uh, <laughs> so it's all over the place. I mean, you know, we constantly see tools coming out all the time, different platforms coming out all the time, different methods to use inside of Kubernetes. So like different ingress controllers, different service mesh, all these things. One thing that I'm constantly looking for is how do I manage everything? How do I manage ingress for all of my environments? How do I manage RBAC for all of my environments? How do I manage overall Kubernetes clusters and application deployments for all of my environments? Now, throughout just, you know, playing around with different tools, seeing the different platforms that are available and all of that, I caught up with Portainer. And in my opinion, it's an awesome platform that you can use to actually manage everything from a Kubernetes perspective. And they also do Docker Swarm and Nomad and all that stuff. And you're gonna probably see some content around that coming from me later on, but we're really focused on Kubernetes right now and kind of getting the word out there in terms of quite frankly, making managing Kubernetes easier because it doesn't have to be a bunch of kubectl commands and switching context and making sure your cube config is good to go and all that. It doesn't have to be all that complicated. You can actually manage it in a central location. Now I know the whole centralized location thing is kind of a bit buzzwordy, but honestly, you can manage all of your Kubernetes clusters in one place versus having to manage them in a bunch of different consoles and a bunch of different clients, all of that. So let's go ahead and take a first look at overall portainer getting it up and running seeing how it all kind of looks and feels and hopefully this video is going to show to you to me how easy it is to actually get started and use so with that let's go ahead and jump right in all right so i have a portainer environment up here as you can see i don't have any environment other than how portainer is installed now speaking of overall installation methods i do want to show something here really quick now in my opinion, it's ridiculously easy to get this up and running. Now you have a few different options. You can just literally run it as a Docker container locally. You can run it on Docker Swarm or you can run it on Kubernetes. Now from a home lab perspective, running it Docker standalone obviously makes sense. If you take a look at this, you even have to create a, where is it? Here you go. You even have to create a volume. So from that perspective, you could actually take that volume and, you know, take it with you throughout different Docker environments and stuff like that. So it's good from a home lab perspective. And, you know, you could even maybe get away with it from a production perspective because you have that volume. But from a, you know, pure production perspective, you want something that's going to always be up and running and scaling, especially in production. So going the Docker swarm or the Kubernetes route obviously makes sense. So if I click on the Kubernetes piece here, and I'm just going to say I'm going to install it in our environment. Again, pretty straightforward. You just need a storage class because you need to have some persistent storage. You can run it via Helm. You can expose it via, you know, an ingress node port load balancer. So the installation method is pretty straightforward. You also have some Kubernetes manifest if you want to just use a raw manifest that way. And even the upgrade path is pretty straightforward. So if I take a look at this, I actually did this this morning because I upgraded to 2.16. And I scroll down here, pretty straightforward. Stop the container, remove the container, pull the latest, and then do a Docker run. So literally in 30 seconds, uh, if you type slow, <laughs> it's up and running for you from an upgrade standpoint. So with all of that, that brings us to the actual environment. Now, when you first get into the environment, just zoom in here a bit, you got a few options. You got some RBAC options here for team and roles. You got some environment options where you can group things, tag them, etc. You have some container registry options, licensing, authentication logs, notifications, and then your general settings. Now, this isn't going to be a specific walkthrough but this is gonna be my take on it. So if I go to environments, this was the first thing that I wanted to test out. Like how easy is it to get an environment added? Well, if I click on add environment, I have a bunch of options here. Standard Kubernetes, Docker standalone, Swarm, even ACI, which is cool. You can provision your own Kubernetes cluster or you can use Nomad at the edge. So of course I'm gonna click on Kubernetes and I'm gonna click start wizard. 
Now from here, I have a few different options. I can import an existing Kubernetes configuration, so literally a kube config, an edge agent, or a standard agent. Now I've been toying around with the standard agent way more than any of the other options. So what I can tell you is it's cool because you have essentially two options that work for each environment. Now from a cloud perspective, you don't have to worry about managing load balancers from like a, you know, deploying metal LB and managing them virtually and all that's good stuff. It kind of just spins up for you automatically. So the load balancer option is pretty straightforward if you're using a cluster in the cloud. Now, if you're not using a cluster in the cloud and you want to use something on-prem, but you don't have to worry about the load balancer stuff, you can use a node port. So just as an example here, let me just open up Hyper-V and I got a bunch of cube ADM boxes running here. I'm going to SSH into this cube ADM cluster here. So it's on IP 192.168.1.61, SSH, mic at 192.168.1.61. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy via a node port. It's going to run this manifest. And as you can see, it's going to create the namespace, service count, RBAC, permissions, the services, deployment, all that good stuff. So if I run kubectl, get all namespace portainer, we can see that everything is up and running at this point. Now, one thing that I do want to point out, if you're adding via a node port, you want to point to 30778. If you're adding via a load balancer, you want to point to 9001. So let's go ahead and copy that. And what we're going to do is we're going to type in 192.168.1.61 because that's the IP address of the control plane over 30778. And I'm going to just type in Cilium control plane. And I'm going to connect. All right. As we can see, that environment was added and it's pretty quick. I mean, we can already see it. It's right here. So if we click on the environment and we click on Kubernetes configuration view, that's going to pop up the configuration view right here. And we can see everything about our environment. So it's, it's fast. Like you don't have to wait X amount of time to see your environment up and running here. And the cool thing is, is that you get a bunch of options. Once you click on the conf Kubernetes configuration that we just did, you can see custom templates, namespaces, Helm applications, ingress, config maps, volumes, and the overall cluster. And then if I dive into, for example, the applications that are running, this is really cool as well. So I can see an Nginx deployment running. So if I click on that, we can see how many pods are available, the namespace that it's in, the deployment, any events that are occurring, and a lot of other information on the application. So what I want to showcase here was my first thoughts on Portainer. And here's the thing. It's extremely easy to use Portainer versus using standalone Kubernetes. So like, for example, let's say I want to deploy a Helm chart. Well, in standalone Kubernetes, I have to run a bunch of commands. I have to run the Helm installation, all that. In Portainer, I literally just click on Helm. I pass in the chart and it comes up here and then I install it and that's it. So again, like Portainer... The whole idea behind Portainer is that if you're new to Kubernetes or you're just getting started with Kubernetes, it's supposed to make it easier for you. If you're an advanced level engineer in Kubernetes, it's supposed to save you the headache of running the same million commands that we always use day to day using kubectl. So let's try to do something in Portainer that maybe we would do in our day to day. Let's do, I don't know, managing users. So under settings here, I have users. Now keep in mind, let's just take like standard Kubernetes for example. There's no way to manage users. So you have to go to like some OIDC, which is like a third party, or you have to just literally manage Linux users like you would if you SSH into a Linux box and added a new user and all that. In Portainer, it makes it incredibly easy. So like, let's just do my test and give it a password. And then I click create user. So now at this point, I have a user that's available that I can use in one of my Kubernetes environments. So it's just stuff like that. Portainer just makes easier for you to manage, you know, even namespaces. If I go to a namespace and maybe I click on monitoring and I scroll down, I can see all of my apps that are running in this namespace versus, you know, standalone Kubernetes. If I wanted to do that, 
I have to run kubectl get namespaces. Okay, there's my monitoring namespace. kubectl get pods namespace monitoring. Okay, here are my applications that are running. With Portainer, like I'm just I'm in the UI. I just click namespaces. I click monitoring. I scroll down. Here are all my applications. So it's just supposed to be more straightforward. That's the whole idea of Portainer is making orchestration management more straightforward. Now again, Portainer isn't just about Kubernetes. As I'm sure everybody knows watching this, I love me some Kubernetes, but here's the reality. Portainer is the only platform right now that's managing all orchestration systems in a very well manner. So again, if I click on add environment, I can add just a Docker container. I can add a swarm cluster. I can add a nomad cluster, a Kubernetes cluster. I can even provision my own Kubernetes clusters inside of Portainer in EKS, GKE, DigitalOcean, Linode service, Sivo service, AKS. And all I have to do is just pop in my credentials. So managing orchestration in general, not just Kubernetes and Portainer, the whole idea is to make this easier for you. And that's my biggest first look. I mean, it really comes down to three things. Number one, adding an environment is ridiculously easy. Number two, managing the environment is ridiculously easy. Number three, I have access to everything that I need inside of my Kubernetes cluster right in Portainer. And... I can manage it all in one location. This is huge. I mean, for me, I'm constantly consulting with different clients. I'm constantly utilizing different environments. And some of my clients, like we're talking 10, 15 different Kubernetes clusters. So imagine if I can manage it all from here. And let's say I just have one Kubernetes cluster. Well, guess what? I don't have to run kubectl commands. I don't have to make sure that my cube config is good. I don't have to make sure that I have the right context set and do everything from my command line. I can do everything right here, which is a big selling point for me. And that's my first look at Portainer. Hope that you enjoyed this video. Hope that this gave you a high level of what I'm really seeing in this space right now. And do keep in mind that I'm gonna be creating a bunch of content for Portainer, showcasing a bunch of different features. A lot of Kubernetes, but keep in mind, not just Kubernetes. So with that, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you again next time.